A pleasure to meet you. Uh, I watched the movie last week and absolutely loved it. I think it's such a like a well explored genre. But what do you think gave Blitz such a fresh and unique perspective? I don't know. You're the you're asking the question. You tell yeah. me. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I don't. I'm, look, I just wanted to sort of have a situation where we looked at a particular time of history um, uh, and we did a lot of research about it and just wanted to sort of bring things to the surface, which. Um, I thought was interesting uh, and important and to tell the story through Charles' eyes. So again, it was just wonderful to sort of, you know, to go through this sort of research and working with my historian, historian sort of Justin Levine and in Pierre War Museum to sort of bring these things, which are just so amazing to, mm. to, to the surface as, as such. I mean, what was that research process like? like? Did you get like stories from real evacuees that kind of inspired your, um, inspired the plots of the story or parts of the story? Well, a lot of, yeah, a lot of, again, yeah, just when you sort of look at the sort of landscape and what was going on there in, 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 that, in, that, in that situation of the Blitz, and there's so many incredible narratives, so many incredible stories that, again, you know, I, I obviously had my idea what I wanted to do, but of course, I love the idea. I don't like to put a stencil on things, I like things to tell me, to draw things out. So that was interesting to sort of talk about people like, um, you know, Mickey Davis, for example, you know, this, this, this very this small gentleman who ran this amazing shelter or Ife, the air warden, you know, the, the Nigerian air warden who was a law student here who patrolled the Maribone area or, you know, what happened, you know, with, with the underground, with the real story of people trying to get into the underground. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, even the smallest details of the, of, of firemen dealing with, you know, in, inadequate equipment. It was just very interesting to sort of, lay that narrative out to show the landscape of what was going on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned Ife. I really loved his character. Can, how important was he for George's journey, obviously, uh, literally, but like, spiritually as well? Well, obviously, very important. I mean, as, as you know, George sort of reflected on himself as he, he being, a, a, you know, a, a black boy and is this, you know, you know, for the first time seeing this, you know, black man of authority, this gentleman. And again, I think it definitely obviously had an effect on him and who he, who he saw himself as, because of, up until that point, everything was quite negative about who, who he was as a person. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it felt like when I was watching it, it felt like almost like Homer's obviously this person trying to find his way back home mm. in kind of dangerous situations. Was this mm. in thinking like the, that mythological aspect of the kind of this journey? No, I, I, I'm not saying that, you know, I, I don't like the idea. I just wanted eyes wide open, as it were, and I, 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 just using that sort of idea. I mean, this, listen, George had his narrative worked out for him, mm -hmm. but he did not want to be a part of that narrative. He basically subverted that narrative by jumping off the train. So mm -hmm. I love the idea of this person taking the charge of their own sort of destiny rather than sort of allowing things to happen to him. And yeah. but also through that journey, of course, we, we get an idea of London. In, in a way but you know it, it, yes there is skill yes there is skill to this journey but also there's intimacy at the same time which again to do both at the same time was something was yeah, was a bit of a feat but that's what i want to portray yeah i mean you mentioned like the journey of london what was it like to recreate the vibrancy of the club scenes there was some like, like my favorite scenes just kind of you could feel the energy in the cinema what, oh yeah. that was amazing that was that was that was inc incredible with my uh, choreographer coral who is extraordinary. So again, it was just one of those things where the, you know, the dancing, of course, there's, there's two different kind of clubs in, in our picture, as you know, sort of the, the more holy polloi and the more sort of down and dirty one. And it's kind of interesting to sort of go between the two. But again, you know, during wartime, there was a lot of joy. There was a lot of, you know, again, it, it's it's like Prince party until, until, until 1999. It's a different sort of idea of, it's not just about fear, it's about joy as well. Mm. And a last question, is it kind of, disheartening to see that there's, there's parallels between what we've experiencing nowadays or like the middle east and like we've just not learned the lessons from the past it's kind of it kind of um yeah it's kind of disheartening to see yeah i mean it, it is and um, i mean I, I don't think this movie could come at a, a more a more important time than now um unfortunately um and i imagine it adds to, to the urgency of it but again i think what's very important is to see this particular narrative through a child's eyes and you know, to see where we're going wrong as adults, in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, unfortunately, that's my time, but I love the movie and people are going to love it when it hits, hits the cinemas. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir.